everyone, I'm Stella and this is Taran from Maple University and we are excited, aren't we, to show you expeditions. I've been waiting for it for <coughs> since Scythe came out. Jokes. But jokes aside, expeditions, this is sequel to Scythe. So somebody say Scythe 2.0. Do you need expeditions even though you have scythe, even though you have and love scythe? And do you think it's the same game? The quick answer is it's a different game. It's a very different game. Very it different. looks very much the same. Yeah. It's in the same world. It uses the same art. And it does have a, the star placing mechanism mm -hmm. that will feel familiar. But really, otherwise, it's a different game. If you want to see the components in more detail, I have unboxing or what's in the box video, which I will link in the description. But for now, we'll give you an overview of the game, what you're trying to achieve, and what we think of it. Yes. So let's let's look at an overview. This is what you are confronted with when you go into the game. You have got a large board full of hexes. There's some cards here. You've got your own board. There's a central board a lot of workers and tokens and money and things to go about. So what is this? Ultimately, it's mostly a deck builder, a deck and hand building game. Kind of in the Concordia style, in that you get your entire hand, you play the cards out of it, and then you get to refresh them back into your hand. Um, but it's got a bit, it's got some other things going on there, which I'll, which we'll get into. Uh, but I would say this game is 60% deck builder. And there's also a series of actions which happen out here on this map with exploration. Let's have a look. There's, there's essentially four main actions that you'll have in the game. Move, play, gather, and refresh. Move and gather kind of work together. When you move, you're going to move up to three spaces around this map. You can go exploring and uh, revealing new tiles and collecting these uh, map tokens and putting out some of these sorts of goodies on the board. Corruptions. Corruption. So that's the move. That's move. And then gather is all about doing the actions in your locations. And there's various actions that will get uncovered as you go along. So move and gather work together like that. Play and refresh is as I described before. When you play, you're going to play a card from your hand, which is actually a series of face-up cards to the left of your board. And you're going to play it into your active area, it's called. It's kind of like a discard pile, which will be a row of cards on the right-hand side. And then you resolve their abilities. It will give you some, uh, some income of uh, these resources here. And you can further activate these cards if you have a matching worker. So let's say I play this card, for example, um, and give me this resource, and I can activate it with a blue worker, and I would get to resolve the text effect. And then refresh is all about resetting that, so all the cards and all the workers would go back to be available again. On, your, on most turns, you're going to take two out of the three main actions, move, play, or gather. And you have to pick a different one to miss every turn. So that's, that cube's going to move around. And then every so often when you need to refresh, you're going to spend your whole turn refreshing. And so what we'll do, I'll just, uh, with the magic of video, I'll uh, explore this board in an instant. In a Thanos style. Ready? Well. OK. And, oh, no. Wrong click. Oh, no. You made 50% of everything disappear. Undo, undo. You. You undo. OK. Well done, Terran. Okay, so here is the board fully explored. So down here at the bottom, these ones are going to be available and you're going to use them to get most of the basic workers, build up your ability to activate the cards that you're getting. There's also uh, actions which will let you take cards from anywhere in the display. Uh, some of the actions will only let you get adjacent cards. And you've got to kind of look at what actions are out here and uh, pick the ones which are close enough to each other because you can only move three steps with each of your moves, and Up you want to. to try to chain things together. Mm. When you're playing your cards, there's a few major actions that you're going to be trying to do. So there's an action called Vanquish, where you can spend these uh, power and guile to gain these corruption tokens. Those will each be worth two points. 
or two coins, much like in Scythe, coins and points are kind of synonymous, and you don't really spend them very much, you basically just gain them. So there's Vanquishing, which will let you defeat those. Among the cards, there are Meteorite cards, they have this uh, little side text on here. You want to gain those and then meld them into your player board, and they will give you an immediate hit of money based on a certain objective. And each time you get another meld, you score all of your previous melds again as well. So that's a big way that you can uh, build up points. Of course, this is uh, like a deck building market, it replenishes every time. Uh, there are item cards. You can do what's called an upgrade action, which is this one here, that slots items to the right of your board and gives you both some money at the end of the game and an ongoing passive ability. So those can be really helpful for your engine building. There are quests, so that's these ones with the hearts here. When you solve quests, you, they all have a number on them. You need to be in the correct tile, solve the quest. Uh, it will cost you a little bit of this power or guile, but what it will do is level up the points of your stars. And the stars, this is where the game is most scythe-like. There's a series of different types of combo objectives that you want to reach for, like having four quests, having four melds, having four items, getting this specific Vanquish uh, corruption token over there, seven Vanquish, eight cards, things like that. And for each of the stars, to get it out there, you actually have to take a star action. It's not automatic like it was in Scythe. And then your stars at the end of the game will be worth more points based on how many quests you've sold. The game will continue playing until someone has got all four of their stars on the board. So it's kind of a race towards that. Uh, towards that moment, and then you'll add up all your points for those objectives as well as anything you've gained during the game, and whoever has the most coins is the winner. It is a different game, right, with Scythe. If you are familiar with Scythe, you can see it looks like Scythe. So this board is definitely, well, Endgame Trigger is Scythe. Well, technically it's a uh, place at the bottom of it, but it doesn't really matter because that's your starting point of your max. But you can see Coins is points and this bit, but because it's called Site 2 points, it's sequel to Site, so it's kind of like thematically, it's kind of like inside of the max, but you can see it's different. The other similarity is when you do this movement, I mean, almost you have to move basically, you can't do exactly the same thing twice in a row, yeah. except if you have something, I don't know, whatever cards that, or expansions that I expect. There's gonna be expansions, how big the box is. There's space in the box for expansion. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, ooh, that's another max. Anyways, this max is awesome. By the way, we are going to paint this max. So check out the video of me and our friend Henry painting this max. And maybe it gives you some inspiration to paint yours because we always use slap chop method. So this is a quick method, so about, probably about 10 minutes-ish per mini, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, depending how detailed you want to be. And it's just, you know, this mini looks better in no time. Hmm? Especially yeah. if you want to keep repeating <coughs> playing, which we have enjoyed playing this over and over again with two players and higher player count. So this game plays two to five players. And I thought, of course, I expect something like Scythe and I thought, Okay, this is the icon matching or whatever, but as Terence said, this is 60% deck building. You want to collect these cards, get the right combo of cards. Uh, what's the word there? Trash, almost like the Valley of the King. Valley of the King? Yeah. Almost. Yeah. You trash them or put it away, tuck it away. Yeah, moving it to a scoring area. It's got that thing which Valley of the Kings. It, it combines that Valley of the Kings. Um, Tyrants of the Underdark was another early one to do it moving cards out of your circulation and into a scoring area, but it does it with a Concordia style of um, hand deck building management, which I don't think I've seen before. No, I haven't either. If I thought hard enough, maybe, but I haven't, I, I can't really think of a game that uses that style of deck building with that mm -hmm. style of thing. And the cards become really, they become really tight and often you know, they will, they will score combo with their own type of cards. And so if you're moving it to a scoring area, you're losing its ability and its combo. And so you really have to manage your hand in a really tight and effective way. 
And so, what's the verdict? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And why? Yeah, I do like it overall. And I think it is a... It felt... It, I always like things which feel a bit different. And it felt different in that way I described before. It's got that really urgent uh, race feeling that you get not not just out of Scythe. I know that players who are very familiar with Scythe uh, become... They can look at their character and their mech and work out quite optimally how to build everything up quickly. This had that sort of the feel, and also Euphoria was the stone light game that had that sort of feel. You could you could rush for things early, and if you got the engine building bits you needed, you could uh, really escalate the game as it goes on. Because there's a number of things here that start to give you more income as you get more stars, more melds, things like that. For sure. I love it. I just want to play it again. We talk about more in details about two players and high player counts, how it feels. But what I love most about it is the engine build and strategy. It's there are there are so many, and it's one of those games that after you played it, you were like ah. Oh whether you lose or not, like, I want to try that strategy, especially if you lose, it's like, oh, I want to try that strategy next time, maybe it's good. I want to try to collect the quest, which is the things on the top there, which also gives you more points, the more stars you put out there. I think Scythe had got that mechanics as well. And, or you want to build up the items, or you want to be generalizing things, and you, or you want to just collect these things. I found that collecting these things, I thought that was weak, but, at one point when I tried the strategy, it actually gives you, if you finish it up, and you can do multiple actions, you clear it up, and you, uh, my character anyway, it will do the bottom action. That's basically like extra actions. It's an extra gather extra on top gather. of a, yeah. a vanquish, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's very efficient. I love the fact that uh, Taryn said earlier about there's a rush to it. Although there's no rush in this one, like any numbers of players can put their stars out. But there's that rush, like collecting the map or, or clearing this up, that's rush. And then gaining the cards that you need. It's also a rush before your opponents get it. Yeah, there's an interesting pace to this game because early on you saw when everything was covered up, um, you know, only the basic actions are there. Then these come out, but the good actions are all covered up by these vanquish or by these corruption tokens and it's very slow building up what you need to vanquish them early on and it gets faster once you get your first star out because your starting cards give you more resources when you do that and so you end up, I find we get this interesting thing where there's kind of a rush early to explore because if you explore there's a star on offer for getting five of the map tokens uh, or for getting lots of workers so it's or for getting eight cards, kind of like the terraforming Mars yes. planner thing. You can build up your hand and then whittle it down. So it's kind of this early little rush to get these stars and get the, the resources you need and find combos that you can work mm. for, the, for the game to work really well. And then all of this is open up and players are slowly working towards having enough to vanquish these and vanquish the ones which help them and don't help the others. And then... Once the game gets to the end, everyone's getting their resources quickly, but there's fewer of these to chase, and it all becomes uh, whittling your deck down yep. and, and really working it. So it's got this urgent pace that, that shifts as the game goes on. It's really very, clever. Very true. And points or coins are really tough at the start. Like, okay, one, yay, I win. We can, <laughs> I have one coin, but then it gets more and more. And especially towards the end, and every single coin sometimes is worth it. Like, oh, just one coin, just two coins. That's kind of like all you need. But if you can gear towards, this is not strategy, right? Mm -hmm. This is like sharing. So if you can gear towards getting, a, getting some coins and do something else, that makes it more efficient. And, you know, I was like, which one you want to go first? You want to build the engine build. So if you do something and that will give you something else. Or this one, every time you tuck this, you activate that card bonus and the previous cards bonus or this one when whenever you complete the quest you get to uh, get the bonus and then that where is worth much a lot of i mean your stars worth more the more quest you complete so it's just like just so many things and look 
these are the cards. And um, this is just the base game card. And, you know, this is what we don't... I, I have not received any information yet about potentially if there's expansion, but we look at the inside of the box. There's space for two more mechs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you spotted. Um, the, you know, let's talk about player interaction. It's always something that we yep. discuss. Uh, we've played the game at both two and four players, so we've got a bit of a comparison there. Nothing changes in the setup between two and four players, and it will play up to five as well. Um, I felt that certainly there was there was more in most of what you're doing is your own personal decks, so and not that much happens. But there's a couple of things at higher player counts that make it a little more interactive. And have to rethink your move. Yep. I mean, tents usually pretty quick in between players, tents. Yep. And so what those are, when you're on a space, no one else can go there, so you can block people out from spaces. And you can stay there as long as two or three turns because uh, you can't skip moving every turn. So at most you're going to skip one for a move and then a refresh and then you're going to have to leave the space. So you can block things out for players. These become a lot more competitive if everyone's got what they need to get them. You've always got the fear of losing the card that you need. Although I didn't necessarily find that one too competitive because there are there are probably five. There's five different colors. There's three different types of cards. So often players will get into their little niche and they'll build up the the ones they have workers for. So that was and there's some not always the most kind of competitive. Like similar combinations. Like there are a few times in these games that I feel uh, somebody stole it. But I'm not, you know, gonna cry over it because as you say, there's usually enough cards for everyone. <laughs> and then racing for the map tokens at the start of the game is another one. At two players, it's not that, it's pretty easy for both players to get the five mm -hmm. maps they need for that. Mm -hmm. At higher player counts, those become more competitive and you have to end up using this space here to, to fill to up the gain. gaps. Yeah, to gain the tokens. So I, th I think I prefer it at the higher player counts. The turns are pretty quick once you know what's going on. Sometimes you're just going to move and pick up a worker. And that's it. Uh, yeah. and, and that is it. Yeah. So but other times you're like, oh no, I already have a chain of movement, but somebody just went to that space and now I cannot go to that space. What am I going to do? Yeah. There are times like that. But yeah, mostly mostly it's pretty quick. And we all everyone's surprised how quick the turn was in between yeah. players. So not a lot of downtime usually, even though in high play games. I think one thing, funnily enough, yeah, obviously there's there's a lot of comparisons with Scythe here, but I actually felt it spoke more. It had this red rising sort of feel to it in the pace and the way the game was going. And why I say that is that you're taking two actions per turn, and one of them's often going to lead you towards one of those um, objectives that you're chasing on the board for your most points. And often you're doing something with a card and something on the board. And you're also constantly out there looking for cards and getting cards to make the combinations that you need. So, so it's a very different game to Red Rising as well. But I actually had that feel when I was playing it. Okay, yeah, I, I actually didn't get that feel, but maybe anyone would probably have a feel you watch this video maybe before you buy it or after you buy it, potentially before you buy it when you're trying to decide if you should get it or play it or not. Uh, by the way, if you have played Scythe also, if you think that this reminds you a little bit of Red Rising, please let us know in the comments. Every single comment, every single like would help us, so really appreciate that. And if you can, you know, subscribe to us, there will be a bonus. Thank you so much. That is the high play interaction and it is very replayable and two players. I don't have any preference between two and four players. I think they both has got its own good and bad. I think it just it feels kind of similar, yeah. although it's choking up the boards a little bit. Um, in, I mean, in two players, of course, like I could be in here and you could be in there, for example, and then it's just doing our own thing. But we don't know how these tiles are laid because these are random. It could be the ones that we want is just in this one corner, and that's that's it basically. Yeah, and that that's an interesting element to the game as well. Uh, you don't know where things are going to be, and then when the board opens up, you've kind of got to build your strategy around where you want to yeah. be on the board because it is two or three turns to get across to oh, the yeah. other side. Yeah. Um, one of the games we played 
pretty much all the actions which let you get cards were over on one yes, side yes. of the board. And it wasn't until halfway through I'd been hanging out on the other side doing the actions I wanted. And then I realized that I had dwindled my hand down too low and I didn't actually have much engine left. Uh, and it was because I'd hung out on the wrong side mm. and I just hadn't replenished the cards I was uh, getting rid of. Yep. And these tiles are all the random. There's the south tile, the center tile, and the north tile too. So it's random to some degree. The yeah. higher powered, more powerful ones tend to be on, obviously on the, on the top side of the board. Yeah. But the cards are always in these five slots. And I like it every time it gets taken. It gets replaced straight away and everyone's like, ooh, what's a new card? <laughs> That's like, ooh, wonderful feeling. Yeah, you are going to spend a lot of time reading text. Yeah. Um, like any deck builder that has a lot of different cards that come out. I do like these mechs. This is a tin can with uh, with buzz saws for hands. Mm. So that's pretty cool. I cannot wait to paint these. Yeah. And one. they do have uh, unique player yep. powers as well. So that is very scythe-like in that you'll have a ca a character and a mech combination at random and. Uh, each side of that is unique. Yes. And the max power, like, it costs you less to uh, take this token, or you can move up to four, things like that. That's like, oh, move up to four sounds really good. Uh, there are also things that let you tuck in five cards rather than four cards, just things like that. Yeah. Oh, if we have other videos, I mentioned the fact that we are going to paint these max. If we have any other videos at all, I'll certainly will link it in the description be below so you can check it out if you like. There's definitely a, a quick but present learning curve to the game as well. I think it some games you can um, you can understand the rules and then go pretty well in your first game. It's probably going to take you half a game to work out what's important and what sorts of combos are going to work. Um, you can and you can even get very distracted by how big this board is. You look at what's out here, and you're not necessarily going to recognize that the deck building is 60% of the game. Yeah, true. Um, so I, that that's an interesting element. I think it's going to take most players at least half a game mm -hmm. to have any idea what's important. But once you play it at once, mm -hmm. um, you'll be you'll be pretty yeah. comfortable. Well, maybe the first half would be to familiarize yourself with the tokens. There are variations of, of those on the tiles and also on the cards. Again, let us know if you have played Scythe, what do you think of this game? Uh, have you pre-ordered this game? Let us know. And whatever you do, whatever you are going to do, hopefully you will be doing something fun today, playing board games, gardening, watching TV, watching football, AFL, I don't know, whatever it is. And thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time, hopefully. Bye for now.